You're convinced that the thing on this table isn't human. Its cries are human. Do you know what it is, what I began with? No. An animal. Welcome back to the dungeon, kids, and sometimes, sometimes somebody shoves a game through the slot that Civvy's never heard of and honestly doesn't have much hope for. Vivisector Beast Within is a Ukrainian-made game from Action Forms, who are responsible for, oh, look at this, a frequent request for this show, Chasm the Rift. Maybe one day, kids, seems like a fine little game. And the Carnivores games, and Duke Nukem Endangered Species, which was cancelled and apparently reworked into this game? What the fuck? Doesn't matter. What we've got here is a ridiculous plot for a game. A mad scientist is creating animal, human, super animal, super soldiers on an island, kind of based off the island of Dr. Moreau, but, uh... Well, Mr. Douglas, very good of you to join us. Oh. No, not that one. <laughs> no, not that. Not that at all. I'll tell you, I'm not looking forward to this. I haven't played Chasm. People tell me it's great, you know? And this company does iOS versions of Carnivores games now. And the Wikipedia page on Vivisector looks like this. This is the episode Civvy's hoping to break out big on YouTube. Like and subscribe, kids. So let's talk about the Duke's involvement, which is kind of nothing. This was supposed to be a game where Duke Nukem hunted animals, kind of in line with the Carnivores games the studio had put out. Tracking, hunting, killing, and you'll see some of this stuff made it into the final game, since that game didn't happen and we can't even blame Randy Pitchford for that. Though I still feel his specter, his influence looming over this place ever since Aliens Colonial Marines. And then down below, probably the lowest form of magic is mentalism. Uh, so I'm going to perform a mentalism trick uh, for you. Get uh, out of my head! What? I need to tell you something. Come on, Malika. You know it's over. Listen, please. You need to know this. It's really important. How important could it be, lady? We got a pregnancy scare or something? Now's not a good time. We might not get another chance. No, I think everything's going to be fine. Back on Earth. I had no time to explain the assignment to you. So Wait, listen stop. Hold on. Back on Earth. That's gotta be a bad translation. That's not, that's not what she means. So listen carefully. As you know, a week ago, Liam Quaid's squad was sent to the conflict zone with short notice without taking necessary precautions. We've lost contact with them and need to launch a rescue mission immediately. Damn it, there's no time. And that transparency on that netting back there, that's, that's not transparency. And Kurt, he just picks up a moth and puts it to his ear. Kurt, this is important. You really should be listening. There's like symbolism here, kids. It's, it's deep stuff. The only thing we've got is a working radio beacon. We'll get airlifted to their possible location and hope for the best. At least we know who we're looking for. With our combined efforts, we should all make it back. Hopefully. Okay, looks like I take point to check out this wooden shack. Lots of fish, uh, this radio. This is Liam Quaid. If you're hearing this message, we are probably dead. I don't know what's going on here, but it's not a military operation for sure. Nor is it related to our assignment here. The only thing I know is, you gotta get out of here right now. That is oh, now we're right into it. Holy shit, she's already dead. I've been playing this game for a hot minute. This is brutal. Turns out I'm being stalked by a thing. This is very B-movie. Kind of endearing the way that they put this 2D overlay over a cinematic camera. This large open area is pretty intimidating, but you're supposed to head to these green beacons and navigating this game isn't too bad. However, I have to mention this. Well, you can move pretty fast on even terrain if you're going uphill at all. It's kind of like in real life where you get progressively slower and instead you just have to bunny hop to get over it. Yeah, this game has some weird dismemberment and damage physics where you can just blow big pieces off your enemies. It's kind of cool. Not even bad so far. The movement, like I said, is a little wonky, but it's got a nice atmosphere. These rain effects aren't bad. I mean, for 2006, they're questionable, but overall, really not bad. You haven't been identified. Activate the transmitter. It's your personal identification module. If your transmitter is malfunctioning, call the authorization center for further instructions. Whoa, guys, give me a break here. Oh. Looks like the animals are back, but they aren't interested in me. These bastard hit scanners who are half a mile away in a tower who I can barely hit? They are. So I'm fighting soldiers, their Humvees are getting blown up, there's electric cyber hyenas teleporting in and out of nowhere, and if I mislabel an animal during this video, please don't start bitching about it in the comments. Animals aren't people, they don't care. I'm having a hard time keeping the ammo for the M16 filled. You start out with an M16, a knife, and a pistol. And I mean... They're not terrible. The hyenas aren't very tough. I can't seem to pick up any of the weapons that the enemies are dropping. I've got some kind of device that's gonna let me upgrade my stats. I've also noticed that the fall damage in this game is kind of bullshit. 
You can climb ladders at light speed. I'm just walking around when I fall through the floor into this electrified... whatever. I'm getting mixed signals from this game. It loads a save that isn't my most recent quick save, but is a quick save. Okay, let's keep following that green beam, and I'm in a cage surrounded by hyenas, and I'm long past being out of M16 ammo. I guess this pistol isn't too bad. I'm noticing that when you backpedal, it's significantly slower than you would expect in a shooter. I'm glad that this game about genetically enhanced super animals is doing realism where it counts. We're still supposedly headed for an extraction point. This is Eagle 2, entering the corridor now. Okay, never mind. I'm getting points for exploring plane wreckage. Yeah, points. You use points to buy upgrades. This game is really starting to confuse me. Points? No reloading on weapons? Obvious traps I want to avoid but can't because that's where the waypoint is? Oh no, fuck this, fuck this. I think these are leopards that breathe fire? That's not first level enemy stuff, guys. So I go to the plane and lose like 40 health from the drop. The pilot is dead. Let's see what- Oh god! We're flying! Right into an ambush. It's not that this shotgun is bad. I'm just kind of bad with it right now. The shotgun itself is fine. So, Liam Quaid, we were going to rescue him. You remember him? Liam, this is Kurt. Kurt Robinson. We came here to find you. But- Guys, I've got a connection with Kurt Robinson. They found my tracer. We're gonna get out of here after all. Liam, listen to me. It's not gonna happen. There were five of us. Now I'm pretty sure I'm the only one left. They're all dead. Turner, too. Found his radio. Whoa. This dude's been here for two weeks dodging electric hyenas and fire-breathing leopards. Maybe you should let him down gently. And this girl he has a history with, also dead. Look at his face. That's the face of a heartbroken man. If this cutscene is right, there are just infinite cyber animals on this island. We should be carpet bombing it by now. Nuke it from orbit. Napalm that shit. Is this the shit happening outside right now? I don't want to say you spend a lot of time in this game running from point A to point B in wide open spaces getting ambushed by animals that spawn out of nowhere right in front of you and right behind you, but guess what, motherfuckers? That's exactly what happens. Apart from the fire-breathing leopards and the electric hyenas, you get lions that spit fireballs at ya. I'm not gonna go into how they don't burn themselves, or the monkeys, the fucking monkeys that have grenade launchers and the game spawns them a mile away where they can still accurately hit you, and you have to snipe them and find them and all of this shit. It's a three-rig circus of pain and you're the guy cleaning up the elephant shit while Liam keeps telling you to get in contact with the general, and the invisible black panthers, oh. God, the Invisible Black Panthers. There's sections of this game where you can't go 100 feet without getting ambushed by creatures that'll move way faster than you, especially if you're trying to walk uphill. You've got giant armored bears with rocket launchers. This game is drugs, kids. Finally, you get to a radio and contact the general. This is Kurt Robinson. Kurt, affirmative. This is General Dogstone. Liam and his men are on their way here. He said that you're the sole survivor. That's right. So why don't you level with me, General? What the hell's going on here? Why am I shooting at crazed beasts just to survive? Oh yeah, the cutscenes and the dialogue in this game. If you haven't noticed, they're just the pinnacle. I mean that. They're so bad, but bad in just the right way. I love them. There's no easy answer, Kurt. I know what assignment you were sent on, but there are no rebels here. Copy that? No political conflict either. What we got here are genetically modified animals, which was set free. That's why I had to get you on this island. That was the plan. This makes sense later. Okay, it makes more sense later. The subtitle from the beginning of the conversation stays on my HUD for a while. Uh, it is what it is. So you're led into more little arenas with a horde of animals, and this shit is so frantic and incomprehensible at first that you don't even notice that every time you kill something, your health goes up a little. And thank God, because otherwise you'd never make it through. Over and over, I get locked into an arena. I fight some hyenas and lions and other giant cats. Then when I'm done with them, the game spawns a bunch of grenade gorillas far away that I have to snipe. You have a sniper rifle that sounds like it has a reload animation, but doesn't. 
God, this is awful. Just janky and unpleasant. Going from point A to point B to get, uh, well, vivisected by cyber cats. It seems like there's no rhythm to this combat. It's like being attacked from all sides by teeth and claws and fire. And then there's this shit. These gorillas can apparently target me when I'm way out of sight and range. I mean, look at this. I dodge those because if I stop to snipe them, they'll blow me away. As soon as I think I'm past them... Oh, that's bullshit! That's bullshit! I look out because these two gorillas, who I'm only now getting a good look at because they're still idle for some reason, whatever. You see that right there? That's an M60, and you can't fuck up an M60 in a game. You know, unless you're Postal 3. And this one, it's great, perfect, wonderful. I wish I'd gotten it two levels ago. I've been picking up ammo for it, so I probably missed it in a secret. I go into this canyon, and the gorillas that are outside the canyon, like a quarter mile away, are still tossing grenades at me, but the music just ramped up, so I know what's coming. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Oh, glory, hallelujah, that is a gun. So far, the guns in this game haven't been bad, but this is the first one I've used that felt powerful and fun. One that does what you'd expect to stream a hot ledge of dude jungle creatures that the human race conquered centuries ago. We're going on safari, motherfuckers. No more fire spewing leopards, no more electric hyenas, no more fireball belching lions, and oh, those monkeys are gonna pay. I got a handful of belt-fed machine gun and a head full of- What the fuck is that? Hey, that was actually kind of fun. That can't be intentional. They just didn't make the ground you're fighting on really uneven, so you have to be way slower than everything else. That's gotta be it. Yeah, that's more like it. Cool. We land on this beach and get some really important plot from this wooden thing. See, when Kurt was a baby, he was on this ship here. And yeah, somebody tied him to this piece of wood and he floated away. And we get a match dissolved straight to Kurt. You know, implying that that baby was him. It's really deep storytelling, kids. I don't have to explain it to patrons of the arts such as yourselves. Anyway, this is as good a time as any to tell you how you get items out of crates in this game. See, the crates don't break all the way unless you shoot them or stab them a lot. So you gotta shoot them and then run into them to pick up whatever's inside. It's kinda shit, but you get used to it, and going forward you don't have much of the ammo shortage as you had before. You're still running from point A to point B, but now you're getting the crazy ramblings of some mad scientist, Dr. Moorhead. Dr. Moorhead. Yeah, too easy. Faith. People lose faith every day. Our hourglass counts the depths of our souls. Each grain just adds to the void. Only then the question about the meaning of life will emerge. Once I hear that, I'll know it hasn't all been in vain. I'm telling you kids, this is a game that wants you to shoot and to think. Evolve or die. Meaning of existence. Meaning of evolution in the face of outside forces. This game is clearly too smart for me. I was expecting Duke Nukem fighting animals, but... Nah, no, this is... This is transcendent. But soon enough, I'm back out in the wild getting reamed by fire-breathing cats. Cat, keep away from the cages. They're wired to blow. Yeah, sure, man. What cages? Is everything set? Here we go. Three, two, one... Yes! <laughs> okay, two things, heavy weapons guy. One, you didn't wait until three. And two, what cages? What cages? Before he's even done talking, I'm getting ambushed again. Why were people recommended this shit game to me? I blow up a building, or at least I break a shitload of glass before I get to the next boss and get to try out this rocket launcher that kind of sucks. Compare the M60, which owns... Wait, what did- why did- wait, what? Why did his health bar just refill? Oh, never mind, his health bar filled again, and like, his lower half, or another, or- What? Yeah, the cheetahs have guns? What is happening? They have Tesla guns, this thing, it's fine, it's not bad, but the M60 still outclasses it. 
Kirk, the area is controlled by the guards. They're under my control, but you have not been authorized. The guards rely on their devices, not their sight. They consider you hostile, so you decide. Stealth or force. Wait, when did stealth become an option? I'm in an open field in broad daylight. They don't recognize that I'm human? Now you've got the guards versus the energy weapon wielding whatever they are, and even though these weapons blind you, the combat in this game sure gets better. These guys have better feedback when they get hit and don't immediately surround you and set you on fire. You can actually snipe them since they're not beelining towards you after being spawned five feet from your face. The terrain is a lot more even so you're not constantly slowing down or trying to walk backwards into more creatures. I make it through and soon enough we're inside again shooting soldiers and the weapons are good, impactful, decently accurate, even the shotgun is more useful now. It's about now I realize that this game from dusk till dawn me. I'm all ready for a few more hours of fucking dreadful fire-breathing lions and invisible panthers and shit. They never show up again. No more electro hyenas, no more rocket bear tanks, no more grenade monkeys. Oh no. From here on in, it's humanoid animals with guns. And it's actually pretty goddamn fun. Why the fuck would you front load your game with this terrible shit? You start getting more score points so you can actually upgrade. You start getting much better weapons, like twice as many weapons. You get a machine pistol, you get a better sniper rifle, you get a double barrel shotgun that kicks ass. <laughs> The combat is brought into more controlled and better designed arenas and hallways, copy-pasted areas sometimes, yeah, but this is a budget title, which is why I was worried at first and why I expected the whole game to be the shit show the first two or three hours was. What the fuck, Vivisector? If you're worried about spoilers, now's the time to turn the video off. The cutscenes? They don't get any better because you really can't improve on perfection. Moorhead, I've met your demand. Hmm, really? See for yourself. Kurt, my boy. You are with us again. You've certainly grown into a fine young man. I've been waiting for you. Dogstone took Kurt away after he found out that Moorhead was experimenting on him, you know, because he was a baby and some people find that objectionable. Moorhead, what are you doing? Oh my god, it's a baby! A human baby! Hold on there, are you crazy? Have you forgotten why you, the science expert, were banished from England? I'll remind you for experimenting with animals, Professor. That's what you're here for, damn it! I didn't bring you here to experiment on people. This has gone way too far. I'm taking him with me. Back to the mainland. Of course he did make a deal with Moorhead to bring him back, so... eh? Time for your part of the bargain, Moorhead. Call off the beasts. Calm them down, whatever it takes. We're tired of fighting. Now I know you've lost it. By creating these monsters, you're going against the very ways of God. You still don't get it, do you? I am the God. So yeah, this game gets way better, way more interesting, way more fun. You know, you just have to wade through a couple hours of shit. After that, it's smooth sailing. It's actually kinda easy most of the time, I guess, with the exception of some parts we'll talk about later. But every hour or so, you think the game's gonna end, like when Dogstone gets a helicopter and you gotta fight your way up this tower while fighting off these guys. This isn't revolutionary shit, but it kinda reminds me of something like Quake 2. You're dealing with my favorite enemy in all the video games, Rams with shotguns. <laughs> Right before this, you're on that helicopter trying to land with these animals jumping on and trying to kill you. I thought it was going to be a turret section, but nah, it's actually okay. It's well done. So Dogstone and Liam are ready to pull you out because, I mean, obviously, this place is ridiculous. And can I just say that transitions between game and cutscene for what they have? It's amazingly smooth. Kurt, get down. There's a flat area over there. We'll pick you up there. But it turns out General Dogstone is evil. Huh? What's going on? Out goes Liam, in comes Lion. That's his name, Lion, and oh, he's brilliant, kids. Top notch. For the last ten years, I've watched soldiers die here. Not from bullets, but from fangs and claws. What's that on your chest, lion -o? Some bandoliers? He's introduced a little earlier, saying... Who are we? There are five fingers on our hands, but we're not human. There are five fingers on our hands! One. Two. Three. Four. Come on. 
paltry humans. You have a penchant for self-destruction. So naive and gullible, to put it simply. You are human beings. You let the general go. Bring me to him. I believe we both want this. Am I right? Oh my god, I fucking love this. Kurt's non-reaction to everything makes it perfect. He's just standing here stone-faced to this ridiculous shit. I can tell by the expression on his face that, yes, he absolutely wants this, 100%. I can see it in his eyes. Sorry about Liam, Kurt. I take it he was a friend of yours. I don't know, he could have been. Try to understand. I've spent most of my life here on this island. No way am I gonna leave it to the beasts. Whoa, that is super racist. That lion has better lip syncing than you do. This game is so much better in small spaces, corridors, bases, all that, where your movement is less restricted and you can roller skate through like it's some kind of classic FPS game. Good on you, Action Forms, you pulled it out. And I'm wondering what this would have been like if it was a Duke Nukem game. Half man, half animal, all dead. What a pussy. I'm gonna tear your heart out, you fucking monkey. King Kong ain't got shit on me. It's just, these trenches, you have to stay in these trenches because if you don't, you walk into minefields, and the minefields... Oh boy. How do we deal with landmines, kids? Just like in Half-Life, we toss grenades and... Uh-huh. What the fuck? Not that they are actually mines, I have a theory about how this game blows up the player character, which, alright, I gotta talk about the Bomb Panther. The Panther. Smart, but not perfect. It's a shame she has to be destroyed. She shouldn't be turned over to the humans. They're too weak to keep her. The Bomb Panther is your fault, Kurt, you dipshit. And so what happens with him is you accidentally let him out while you're trying to destroy him. Oh, you were that close. Failed again. You're a loser, Kurt. A real loser. And also a dangerous man. Everyone you meet dies. That's just wrong. You should feel real guilty right about that. And he's the worst. You can't fight him. You think you're gonna do a boss fight, but you're not. Because every time he gets near you, he locks you in position and puts a bomb on you. And Civvy was dumb and he quick saved at the wrong time, so he just kept killing me. Oh no, never mind. That one's an autosave. So I turned on God Mode, which gave me a little glimpse into how the player exploding works in this game. I assume it's some kind of script that spawns explosions on you until you're dead. And if you have God Mode on... A couple times you might think you're gonna deal with a boss like this giant cyber demon looking motherfucker here. Okay, you're supposed to shoot him a little because I ganked the soldiers that spawned over there before they could do it, so what happens is... So what you're supposed to do is get right up in his crotch area and hurt him a little until he breaks out of his restraints. And then you gotta run away and you gotta get him to shoot rockets towards you to crack this door open. My rockets won't do that. The rocket launcher kinda sucks and I think that's because this game has a damage system that likes precise hits more than splash damage. So the M60 is better.
Anyway, you make it through that door and you never see this guy again. So now you're being commanded by Lion rather than Dogstone, and he sent you into this train, and the game keeps switching up locations to stop it from becoming boring, which sometimes it is anyway, it's still fairly repetitive, but the game keeps introducing new monsters and weapons, even though I could have sworn I had all the weapons. See, you think the M60 is the king of your machine guns until you pick up the Gauss Cannon, which is better, fires a million bullets per second, has a scope, and is more accurate. You get the Gauss Cannon in the same slot as the M60, you get an armor-piercing sniper rifle, you get a plasma cannon as an alternative to the Tesla gun, Gun, and for the rocket launcher, you get a howitzer. Now, the only other game I've played with a howitzer is, uh, Blood 2. We all know how that went. <laughs> this one kind of functions just like the Blood 2 howitzer, you know, except only not dog shit. Perfect. Wonderful. This train level is actually pretty cool. There's a lot of work put into it, especially where you're on top of it and the pieces are flying off of it, hitting the monsters. Good stuff. How the fuck did the beginning of this game suck so bad? You crash that train because this is a video game after all, and Dogstone is an asshole. Such a clever move. <laughs> Too bad you're no better off. Thanks for doing my job. Now for your prize. Ha! Meet my wards. Over, brutes! Yeah, this is one of those times the game gets hard again because you're in a giant room with hit-scanning monsters, and they all have M60s. They're wolves, I think. And then in the next big open area, they give you an armor-piercing sniper rifle, so that's nice. You're still dealing with the overbrutes, but you never get a lot of sniper ammo in this game, so it's best to stick to your main good weapons, the M60 or the Gauss gun. Or the double-barreled shotgun, which, if I may repeat myself, is goddamn glorious. <laughs> Soon you're in a research lab where the Bomb Panthers let out. You have to fight against these half-finished animal clone things, which are about as easy as I would think half-finished clones would be. And it's Lion to the rescue. I'll tell you what, Civvy's a friend to animals. Except for squirrels, cats, dogs, goats, cows, snakes, most aquatic creatures, amphibians, rodents, pachyderms. It's all over. Don't come near me. Go on alone. Find Dogstone. He's got a pity for this. We're in the last hour of this game now, kids, and it's snowy? Sure, why not? Except it's a lot of being hit-scanned from behind a fog. I'd complain, but I've upgraded so much that I can tank most of it. I'm actually having a good time. We're in some kind of underground cryogenic facility, or mountain cryogenic facility, whatever. This game just keeps going on and on and changing the scenery and monsters and escalating properly, you know, like a real game. What if this had been a Duke Nukem game? Would it have been the last good Duke Nukem game? Poor Lion, though, he sacrifices himself to save me, taking the bomb from the Bomb Panther and... Well, no, he comes back to save you again when you board this airship. I guess player scripts don't work on him! And Dogstone gets in a big beck while you have plenty of time to shoot him instead of standing there staring blankly while the old doc tells you that you're a perfect specimen. You could be a good father, Kurt. No doubt, strong, brave, reliable. Dream of any woman. Of that nice young lady, for instance. Malika? We might not get another chance. already met? That makes me happy. I wasn't wrong. Hush, Kurt. Don't worry. She's alive, safe, and sound. Look, she's just sleeping. She <laughs> needs the rest. She's fine. A she's just sleeping. Is... The cutscenes in this game are so good, guys. I have to stop myself from showing you all of them because they're legendary. Hey, General! Thought I was dead, didn't you? Yeah. Ah! No one really knows when or how one will die, do they? It's your turn now, General. Face death with dignity, as my brothers did. And then he's the final boss after Lion blows him up, and y'all sink into the ocean. You only have your pistol and have to hit the weak spots on his back. It's lame, but whatever. The ending is just the best. Oh, slow your roll, Viva Sector. It's getting a little Jesus-y in here. Don't be afraid to fall down, Kurt. It allows you to rise. You cannot rise without falling first. That's how you can know who you really are. 
The stairway of desires was too high for the general. My stairway is even higher, but I choose to stay on the lower steps. The wind is blowing hard upstairs, and the light is often too bright. Nature is full of controversy. We have been awarded an eternal life. This is a change of generations. Everything has a beginning and an end. To stay in one's own time is the most important thing. This is the end of the road, Kurt. Let the newly born become the future. I don't know, man. This is beyond me. This is beyond anything I've ever seen in a video game. These cutscenes are they're, they're just blowing my mind. They're completely fucking with me. They're taking me 